Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I am here on the promenade just up the road from Blackpool. Behind me is the famous Star Bus there. So I've driven up here. We're around about five miles north of Blackpool. You might just be able to see the bright lights down there. And this is a little bit of a rushed video, folks, because um, I'm going to see if we can capture Comet Atlas. Now, I'm a little bit out of the loop on this, folks, because I've just come back from the United States where I did not do any stargazing at all. I didn't do any stargazing over there, so I've not really been following this comet. I'll put it on the screen now so you can see the full name of it. Um, now, it's supposed to be on the edge, on, and I mean on the very edge of naked eye visibility. It's less than magnitude four, plus four. Now, there's a bit of a caveat to that. Now, we measure the brightness of objects in the sky in magnitude, and the less the magnitude it is, the brighter it is. So if it's minus magnitude, it's very bright. If it's a plus magnitude, it's not as bright. So you're looking at the brightest star that we can see in the sky, Sirius, is probably about getting on for magnitude minus one. It's a very, very bright star, but it's a point of light. Now, comets are not points of light. The light is spread out, and I took a brilliant picture of a comet back in 2020. You might remember Comet Neowise. I chased it all around Blackpool. I'll show you a picture of it now. I managed to get it over Blackpool Tower and I've seen quite a few. Just look at this now. It's amazing, isn't it? The Comet Neowise was absolutely spectacular and that happened at a time when we were all kind of, you know, it was a weird time, wasn't it? We were all kind of locked up. But anyway, that was Comet Neowise. Absolutely spectacular. It's the best comet I've ever seen. I've also seen quite a few other comets as well, you know, and uh, not all of them are naked eye visibility. Some of them you do need binoculars. I think this one, you will need binoculars or some sort of visual aid to see it. I don't know yet. Like I said, I don't know. We're going to try. Now, my Astro Club, Blackpool and District Astronomical Society, sent me a message and said, we're going to come up here to Russell. I am up here at Russell Promenade. We're just north of Cleveland. Cleveland. This is Cleveland Promenade, and it's the darkest part probably of the whole promenade because if you look that way we're looking into darkness over there there are no street lights beyond where we're parked here so where I park my van right at the end of this sort of parking area here so we're going to head up there into the darkness now and see if we can spot this comet well some of our group have turned up and believe it or not <clears throat> the comet has already been spotted by by a couple of us it's out there somewhere they've got binoculars and we're looking up there somewhere it's out towards the west and it's around about at the moment i mean you can still see there's a lot of light still in the sky it's only just turned seven o'clock here in the uk and there's still quite a lot of twilight now apparently it's about a third of the way up the sky somewhere out there so i'm going to ask one of the guys over here if i can borrow the binoculars and see if I can spot it for myself. I don't know where to look at the moment, but I know it's somewhere up there, up, somewhere up there, around about, like I say, about a third of the way up. Right, okay, you're gonna have to bear with me. So some of the lads have seen the comet through binoculars and they've gone running off into the darkness. So I, I couldn't borrow the binoculars to have a look for myself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very hastily set up a shot. Now that I know roughly where it is, it's near the constellation of Boots, the herdsman. And one of the guys has told me roughly where to point my camera. So I'm going to put my camera on the tripod with a, with a telescope. I've got my Ascar 55 telescope. Um, and I'm going to put that on here and see if we can get a pot shot of the comet before we move up into the darkness. I can't believe this, folks. I have just taken a pot shot using my camera. I've got a Nikon D850 here, and I've got the Ascar um, quadruplet um, telescope on here. And I did a little bit of searching for it, pot shots, using a couple of second exposure with a high ISO, and I've managed to capture the comet. I cannot believe I've managed to capture it. And the second attempt just look at this now, look at my screen. I have captured a comet. I hope you can see that. Look at that, it's there. That's the comet. Oh, sorry, I'll just bring this into, just, oh, there, look at that. 
I've managed to do it, folks. I cannot believe. You can tell I'm excited, can't you? I can't believe I managed to capture it so quickly just by using pot shots. I was just using pot shots roughly where the guys were looking before. They could see the comet in the binoculars. I haven't seen it in binoculars yet. I realise now that I was looking too close to that other star that was just above the bright star. And it's a bit more towards the left hand side than I thought it was, but I've captured a comet. I can't believe it folks, I'm so excited now. I've got myself another comet and wow, using that, it's roughly about 300 millimeters. So you can photograph it yourself if you know where to look. I'll put um, a link in the description to where to look and it depends where you are as well. I'm in the UK, Northwest UK, so it might be a bit different looking to where, to where you are. But at the moment, um, yeah, I've managed to get the, fo the photograph of it, which is brilliant. And I haven't seen it through binoculars yet because we've got a little bit of cloud running across at the moment. But I'm now gonna head off into the darkness where all, all my Astronomy Society members have gone. They've gone up there into the darkness and that'll be better for photographing the comet. And it'll also be a lot better for seeing it as well with binoculars because we've got street lights around here. Whenever you're doing stargazing or anything like that, you want to get as far away from street lights as possible. So we're gonna head up there now into the darkness. I'm gonna take my tri Tripod. I've even got a tracking mount whether that'll be any good because it's quite windy as you can probably tell at the moment it's quite windy it's not very warm so we'll head up there now and see if we can get a better shot and a better sighting of this amazing comet. Okay so we've now come up to this dark part of the, the promenade here it took about five minutes to get up here my goodness it is pitch black up here so we're all up here now and by the way when I got up here we saw a fireball meteor towards the north, it looked amazing. It lasted about one second and it lit up the ground. It was so bad. We actually thought it might have been a firework, but it wasn't a firework because it was heading downwards and there was no sound at all. So we saw an amazing fireball meteor as well. How about that? So I've got my telescope set up here with a tracker. A very, very quickly polar aligned it. North is looking up this way, although you probably can't see it. Uh, so we're all waiting here for these clouds. There are a few clouds that have just come across at the moment and uh, we're just waiting for the clouds to move out of the way and hopefully we'll get into the... The clouds are moving from the north sort of to the south. Sort of there. Now I'm not sure if you can see this but I've got my Nikon D850 camera. So I've got this, the, uh, the shutter speed set at five seconds and that was for that photograph of the comet I took before. And the ISO, as you can see there, is 1600, so it's a bit of a pot shot really. And I managed to get quite a good picture. I've actually got the tracker, can you see? I'm using my Fornax light tra tracker and I've very roughly aligned it with the pole star. And hopefully that will give us a better shot of the comet, a longer exposure of it, and see if we can get a better shot next time. So like I said, that was a very, very quick exposure, a very rough shot. And I think it was a cracking shot of the comet, wasn't it? So this time, I'm going to try for a bit longer shutter speed, uh, longer exposure. And using the tracker should help us to get a longer exposure. Although saying that, the wind is a bit of a problem. We've got gusts of up to 30 miles an hour here. So that could be a bit of an issue, but I'm going to give it a good shot. Okay, so we're having a good time here in the wind. It's a cold wind, but we're all enjoying ourselves uh, looking at this comet. I've actually got a look at it through the binoculars and it's an amazing comet. It's got a nice tail on it. And I've just taken some more pictures of it. Pot shot pictures, but this time using a tracker. Now, I've struggled a little bit to focus with it, but I've got these pictures here. Look at these, don't they look amazing? Look at that tail. The tail is heading straight down. Now remember, the tail faces away from the sun, of course. But I'm trying my best to keep taking more pictures. Now these pictures were all taken 20 seconds, ISO 1600, with a 300 millimeter length on a tracking mount. Now the tracking mount struggled a bit because of the wind. So there is a little bit of movement in the, um, in the pictures but you can go and do this yourself just point your camera to use a 50 millimeter lens use a wide angle lens it doesn't matter you will capture this comet try and capture it early because that's when it's out i'm out now it's just after eight o'clock now i think it's getting up at half past eight and it's getting lower and lower so the best time to capture it is after sunset when it gets dark even before it gets dark so one of us can see it 
and use a wide angle lens and if you want to get in a bit closer use something a bit longer just make sure you know where it is first and then zoom in a little bit with a longer lens first but you can definitely get it with your camera it might even be possible to take a picture of it with a phone I'm not sure if you can see this but I've got my lens here or my telescope should I say and I'm actually shielding it with my coat I've got my coat here and when I take the 20 second exposure I, I'm using a cable release for my camera and I can actually shield the camera and the lens and it helps to get a clear shot so hopefully I'll get a clearer shot of the comet but because the wind is coming from almost behind us it's like a sort of northwesterly wind so if I keep like this when I take the picture and as long as I don't touch the camera or the mount hopefully we'll get a clearer shot of the comet I can't believe it we are seeing everything tonight we have now got Starlink satellites going across the sky Starlink satellites are now moving across the sky wow Right, okay, um, so there you go. What a night it's been. And there was me thinking I was gonna be sat inside, tucked up in the warm, because I've got, just trying to get over this bug, but I've come out here, north of Blackpool, about five miles north, to this very dark spot on the promenade. It's at Rossell, just by the school. The school is just behind me, Rossell School. And what a night it's been. We, we saw a meteor straight away, as soon as we come up to this bit here. And then we spotted the comet. I managed to see it with my naked eyes. You can see this with your naked eyes. Go out and take a picture of it yourself. Just get your camera, wide angle, plonk it down on a tripod, point it towards the west when it gets dark after sunset, and you'll, you'll capture it. You might even capture it with a mobile phone. Absolutely amazing. Uh, we saw the meteor as well. Um, I think the comet might get brighter as well, so um, I'm going to have another look out and possibly do another video on it, maybe get some better shots of it, but I think I've done pretty well. I managed to uh, get better polar alignment and I'm going to put the shot on, my final shot at the end, which I think is a bit better than what you've seen already. I've got a better picture of it and it's got a gorgeous tail on it as well. What a nice comet. So I'll put some info in, in the description for you if you want to have a look at it for yourself and photograph it for, for yourself. But I'm going to leave it there now. What a brilliant night. And the Starlink satellites as well, although satellites are a little bit of a bane for astronomers, but it's still something to see in the night sky. So there you go. I'm going to leave it there now. Look out for another video on the comet if I manage to do one. And don't forget to keep looking up.